out of season and let every that everything have breath. Praise to the Lord. <laughs> Come on, let everything that have breath. Praise the Lord. Look, this is a day that we've never seen before and will never see again. This day is a gift to us from God. Let's open up the gift that God has given us and celebrate him for his goodness. Hallelujah. Hey, welcome Facebook. Welcome our virtual audience. Amen. We are so glad that you've tuned in, that you've joined us tonight. Amen. We thank you that you're here. Man, we appreciate you. Just help us lift up the name of Jesus. Somebody say Jesus. Say Jesus. Say Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Father, we bless you. Father, we honor you. Father, we thank you. Man, God, you are amazing to us. There are no words that can encapsulate your awesomeness in our life. So we thank you again for this opportunity, Father God. Bless us, O oh Lord. And bless us indeed. Enlarge our territory. Strengthen our states. And keep your hand heavy upon us to keep us from evil. We bless you. We love you. And we honor you, sir. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, let's give God some praise.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Nothing but praise I'll give him. He's worthy. He's worthy. In spite of, he's worthy. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. God is good. He is worthy. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to your name, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. He's a good God. <laughs> In spite of Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Our announcements for tonight. August is Psoriasis Awareness Month. Uh, please wear orange on the fourth Sunday. Um, ways to give our cash app dollar sign T P H D I M two. Or drop checks in the church mailbox. Amen. Uh, we are still um, modeling our uh, coronavirus uh, guidelines. We are still complying in compliance with that. So if you uh, choose to worship with us, Please make sure that you uh, wear your mask. Uh, you uh, need to social distance, amen, and uh, follow hand washing and sanitizing guidelines. Um, you know, whatever we do against this thing, we, 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 we're in prayer first, amen, and then we are following. Um, the recommended um, policies, amen. We want to be obedient to our government and to um, God our Father. Uh, women's ministry, the second Sunday, and uh, second Saturday in uh, September, we will uh, have a, a vision board uh, meeting. Um, get together, fellowship, and um, we're asking you to save your magazines, uh, favorite crafts, sentimental representations of who you are. Uh, the meeting will be hosted by Lady Isabel, amen, and facilitated by Lady Angela. And uh, you do need to do some prep work in advance, save your magazines. Amen. Uh, and just know that when we get together, that we're going to um, have a good time. Uh, prayerfully, Corona will uh, be still for a moment as we come together in fellowship, but mostly as we come together in prayer in sisterhood. Amen. Please continue praying for our sick and shut in and our bereaved families. Uh, corona is touching quite a few of us. Amen. So uh, continue to pray. Uh, God's will be done. He is Jehovah Rapha. Amen. And we're getting uh, uh, victory stories concerning Corona. And we are trusting God. Amen.
you, you, you. I worship you, oh Prince of Peace. That is what I know to do. I give you praise for you. Like you lift your voice to Jesus and say, There is none, there is none like, like you, no one else, no one else can touch my heart like you do. I can search. I can search for all eternity, Lord. And find there, there is none like you. Oh, there is none. There is none. Nobody like you. Like you do, I I can serve. I can serve for eternity, Lord. I can fire. Nobody like the Lord. Oh, no. I'm so glad ain't nobody like him. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody, can't nobody, won't nobody be like him. Hallelujah. Do the things you do. And we Oh, oh. 
That's exactly what we've come to do tonight. That's exactly what we've come to do tonight. We've come to worship him. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is freedom of expression. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom to express your adoration freedom to express your love freedom to express your gratitude freedom to express your thanksgiving there is freedom where the spirit of the lord is also hallelujah we shall know the truth and the truth we know will make us free where the truth of god is there is freedom Oh God, we're not ones, we're not here to be bound. We come to be free. And the truth of God will make us free. The Spirit of God gives us liberty. Oh my God, how many are just grateful that, that we are free, that Christ has made us free. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. You ought to be glad that you're free at last, free at last. Hallelujah. Come on, give God praise for his liberty, for the law of the spirit. Thank you for your law, God. And you know that law is the law of love. Hallelujah. Love is supposed to, to emancipate and liberate how can we say we love? How can we say, how can anyone say that they love and, and that brings us into bondage? That's not love. For the law of the spirit, the word of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus sets us free from the law of sin and death. Come on, give God praise for liberty. Hallelujah. Oh, thank God, right where you are, just give God praise for being free having the activity of your limbs and even if you don't you have a right mind hallelujah you have your body you're alive and well hallelujah even if you're a uh, bedridden or, or in a wheelchair but you're alive you're free hallelujah to praise God thank you Jesus you're free to lift up your voice hallelujah you're free to love free to worship hallelujah free to set your affections on God and on things above. We bring you greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We bring you uh, love. We bring you life and liberty tonight from the throne room of God. Hallelujah. We thank God for saving us. Anybody grateful for Jesus tonight? Oh, my God. Hallelujah. Just thinking about the goodness of God. Hallelujah. Just thinking about the sacrifice he made for us. Just thinking about, hallelujah, how he shed his blood for us. And how this week I've been really thinking about it. He's been really uh, placing in my heart what he actually uh, did and performed on Calvary for us. You know, I don't have to wait to Resurrection Sunday. Glory to God. To give God thanksgiving for Jesus to acknowledge what all Christ did on Calvary hallelujah out of his own passion for us did he give his life hallelujah out of his own passion you know when there's love there's strong passion hallelujah whenever you love deeply there's a passion hallelujah that cannot be curtailed hallelujah and his love for us his passion hallelujah it's called the passion of Christ hallelujah wherewith that he stayed hallelujah he chose to live he chose to die he chose to be crucified he chose to be resurrected he chose to raise us up he chose us to live eternally with him he chose us hallelujah 
Oh my God, what love, what love. Greater love have no man than this, that he will lay down his life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah that God will call us friends. Thank you, Jesus. And, and I was thinking about that this week. And I said, Lord, oh God, you released, hallelujah, your blood. Your word declares that out of your body flow blood and water. Hallelujah. Thank you for the flowing blood. Oh, who's grateful for the blood of Jesus? Without the shedding of blood there can be no remission of sin there can be no forgiveness for what you did today what you did last week what you did last month what you did last year what you did hallelujah since you've been in this earth realm without the shedding who's grateful for the blood of jesus that cleanses us hallelujah from all unrighteousness. Thank you. Who needs a blood bath? Glory to God. I don't have to wait till the first Sunday of each month to acknowledge the blood of Jesus. Every day he awakens me. Hallelujah. I'm grateful and I'm thankful for the blood of Jesus. Out of his body flow water, Minister Pam. Oh, hallelujah. For the thirsty soul, the water flowed. Hallelujah. Thank you for washing me. Thank you for washing me in your water, God. Thank you for the washing of your word, God. Thank you, Lord God, for drops of water. Thank you for the river that flows. It says out of our belly shall flow rivers of living water. Are you thirsty? Are you the Samaritan woman? It's Jesus asking you tonight, give me to drink. Come on, somebody. He gave us to drink when water flowed out of his body. Come on, that you will never thirst again. Thank you for the water, God. Thank you for quenching my thirsty soul. Hallelujah. Oh, God, on Calvary's cross, he gave up the ghost. Y'all not understand. He gave up his blood. He gave up this water. And he gave up the ghost. Don't you understand? He gave up humanity that we may receive divinity. Don't you hear the Holy Ghost? This is a great exchange on Calvary's cross. Hallelujah. It was death for him, but it was life for us. Thank you, Jesus. He gave up his human spirit that we may have his holy, his holy spirit. Oh God, I thank you tonight. Anybody thankful with me? Hallelujah. Can I just be thankful to God tonight? Glory to God. Can I just follow the oil? I just want to follow the anointing tonight. I just want to follow him tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you for your blood. Thank you for the water that washes. Thank you for the water that quenches thirst. Thank you for giving up the hallelujah, giving up the ghost, Jesus. And if you gave up humanity, I give up my humanity. That's what he's asking. Hallelujah. Exchange your humanity for his divinity. Bless the Lord tonight. Come on, give God praise for that intro. He's so good. He's so good. Thank you, Jesus. Well, we want to give God all honor and glory. Thank you for one more time being in the house of God. Thank you, hallelujah, for all those that are due honor. Hallelujah, help me. Hallelujah, give God praise. Hallelujah for our pastor and our first lady, Pastor Kenneth Moss and Isabella Moss. Hallelujah, here at the Potter's House Dayton International Ministries. Thanking God, hallelujah, for the bishop of this establishment. Hallelujah, bishop. Mark C. and Lady Angela McGuire, thank you, Father. Hallelujah for covering. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, hallelujah, for the leadership of this local assembly. Glory to God. Come on, Zion. We thank God for our elders and their rightful positionings. We thank you, God, for the ministers, our fellow ministers in the gospel. Hallelujah. Tonight, thank you, Father, for servants. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Flames of fire, past, present, and future. And we thank you for our brothers and sisters in the Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you here and abroad. We welcome you to this worship experience. Come on. Experience afresh with us. Somebody say with us. Hallelujah with us. We are glad that the Spirit of God led you here tonight. Hoping 
believing that he will speak truth that will set free tonight, believing that he will edify, exhort, and comfort tonight, believing, hallelujah, that he will confirm and affirm tonight, believing, hallelujah, that he will perform his good word hallelujah towards you tonight anyone had experienced the goodness of God this week thus far has God been good to you show sure enough been good to you has he made ways show sure enough made ways hallelujah has he healed bodies has he kept you in your right mind hallelujah to God be the glory for all the things he's doing hallelujah tonight we're just going to be with you just want to talk a little bit tonight about letting us all know you can just stay right there. Glory to God. Because I'm sensing the Lord right there. Hallelujah. That we're all in this together. Hallelujah. Come on. Say it with me. Say it with me. We're all in this together. Look over to your spouse, to your children, whoever's in your home right now. Go outside your house, to your neighbors. Hallelujah. In your apartment complex, shout it loud. We're all in this together. Hallelujah. This current state of affairs is not, hallelujah, isolated to one group or individual. Come on, somebody. We are all sensing and feeling the effects, hallelujah, of what is going on in these last days and these perilous times. Somebody say, we're all in this together. Hallelujah. You know, once by themselves, we have been taught that isolation is truly violation hallelujah and though the world and its systems and its mindset hallelujah would would command and govern us hallelujah through social distancing to be isolated yet still we are all in this hallelujah somebody shout together glory be to God I may not be able to lay hands on you. I may not be able to embrace you. Hallelujah. I may not be able uh, uh, to be in close proximity of you. But how many know we're still all in this? Somebody shout together. Somebody shout together. Hallelujah. This past Sunday, the praise team uh, um, uh, ministered song that says, um, after this. There will be glory after this. Can you believe that? Can you perceive that? Can you receive that? That there will be joy after this. Hallelujah. You ought to be shouting with me. I hear you. There will be a testimony. Come on, somebody. After this this glory to God and and we don't have to wait until the after because God has already shown glory God has already given us joy God has already given some testimony the very fact that you're still among the land of the living you ought to be joyful hallelujah the, the fact that you are able to move about hallelujah that there is glory and glory is just natural manifestation we were created to show forth the praises of him we were created to glorify God. Hallelujah. And that means to show that God is still alive. Hallelujah. And he's still alive within us. Amen. Come on, say it with me. We're all in this together. Hallelujah. Brothers, sisters, friends, family, frenemies, enemies. <laughs> we're all in this together. And wherever you find yourself, you all play a part Hallelujah. In the divine purpose and plan of God. Hallelujah. We're all in this. Glory to God. Together. How many know God? Hallelujah. Uses even the enemy. For his word said. What did it say? His word said that, that, that good still will come out of bad. Come on, somebody. It doesn't matter what's going on. Whatever we perceive, God's going to mix it up. There will be glory. There's going to be a testimony. And we can have the joy now. Amen. Come on, give God praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just let that encourage you. Let that encourage you. We want to look at uh, the book of Ezra. Book of Ezra tonight. Chapter 1. 
and, and I, I'm, I'm trying my best. This, this has been uh, in my heart and in my spirit for about five weeks. For about five weeks. We're all in this together. And I said, Lord, everyone in their respective places, we're all in this together. Whether we perceive things good, bad, ugly, or indifferent, it's all all going to work together for the good of them that love God and are the called. Somebody say the called according to his purpose. And so uh, Ezra chapter 1, verses, I'll start with verses 1 through 4. And it says, now in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled. The Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom and put it also in writing, saying, Thus saith Cyrus, king of Persia, The Lord God of heaven has given me all the kingdoms of the earth, and he has charged me to build him a house at Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Who is then among you of all his people? His God be with him, and let him go up to Jerusalem, which is in Judah, and build the house of the Lord God of Israel. He is the God which is in Jerusalem. And whosoever remains in any place where he sojourns, let the men of his place help him with silver, with gold and goods, with beasts, beside the free will offering for the house of God that is in Jerusalem. Somebody shout amen. Lord God, we honor you tonight and we thank you. Your word is anointed. Father, I simply ask, Lord God, as I stand, Lord God, in this, this circle of consecration, in this area of the anointing, I ask simply, Lord God, that I'm changed into another person, to another vessel, Lord. And I ask, Father God, that your spirit comes to the forefront. Lord, I thank you for your word. We thank you for feeding us tonight. We thank you for information. We thank you, Lord God, for inspiration. We thank you for illumination. Lord God, we thank you for revelation knowledge tonight, oh God. We thank you for relevance, Lord God, that we can see and hear, Lord God, and, and, and the word pertains to this very hour, God. We thank you that your word is personal. We thank you that your word is corporate. We thank you that your word is global and universal. We honor you, sir. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Shout out loud. We are all in this together. A little background concerning Ezra. The book of Ezra recounts the efforts of the exiles who returned from Babylon to rebuild the temple. So these were uh, exiles who returned from Babylon to rebuild the temple. Under the leadership of Jeshua, the high priest, and Zerubbabel, the governor over the region, proper worship and the ceremonies associated with it were restored in Jerusalem. So we have this back, backdrop that uh, the people of God, the children of Israel, were sent into exile uh, into Babylon, carried away by Nebuchadnezzar into Babylon. And so now upon their return, they were released to rebuild. Somebody say, I've been released to rebuild. Understand, whatever you in, whatever you've been exiled into, uh, it's time for you to return. This is the time to return. It's time for you to return. And upon returning to God, upon returning to the, your Jerusalem, upon returning to your place of peace, upon returning to your place of worship, it is for the intent and purpose to rebuild. Somebody say, I got to rebuild. 
I, there's no there's no strange thing that the trials and the tribulations that we're facing right now is to get our attention hallelujah and we may sense yes that we are in Babylon yes we're in confinement yes uh, we've been exiled from our local assemblies hallelujah we can't we're just slowly being able to uh, return into our local places of worship why because we were exiled out of the house of God come on somebody but now as we're slowly returning it is for the intent and purpose that we rebuild God's house somebody said I've come to rebuild hallelujah we are come to return to rebuild the house of God and in order to do that we must what first be rebuilt for know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost and wherever God has permitted us to be exiled, it is with the intent that now God has dealt with us. How many can just say God has dealt with me these last 20 weeks? Come on, somebody. I believe God has dealt bountifully with us. He has not even dealt with us according to our sin. But yet, there has been a massive a spirit of conviction. I don't know about you, but I have been convicted on this, that, and the other. Because whom the Lord loves, he chastens. And we are not left to ourselves. If God does not chasten us, then we are what? Bastards according to scripture. And I'm not a bastard. I have a father. Hallelujah. And a father that loves me and, a, and wants to correct me and create in me clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. Why? So that when I return to God, when I return to the presence of God, when I return into the house of God, I am not the way I was when I left here 20 weeks ago. Come on. Hallelujah. I don't want to return the same way I left. I want to return to God. Different, renewed, and restored. And so the, uh, the Bible says that under this, under this governor, that he sent and said, who is it among each of you that God is your God? He's saying, now go, go to Jerusalem. And we know Jerusalem is the place of peace. It's the shalom of God. It's the place in God where there is nothing missing and nothing broken. And yes, we know naturally there's things missing. There's things broken in our lives. But in God, in our Jerusalem, there is nothing missing in your life. There is nothing broken in your life. For he has come to make all things new and all things whole. Somebody say, I'm whole in Jerusalem. Now look how God uses this worldly governor. Remember, we're in all of us, we're in this together. And he's, a, he's addressing Jeshua, the high priest. He's addressing the people. Uh, Ezra is the prophet. What are you saying? We're saying in this, in these times, God is using government. God is using worldly figures. God is using the people of God. God is using the priests of God. God is using the prophets of God. Each and every one of us has a place and God is using all of us to bring about his purpose and his plan. So how can we say and speak against, hallelujah, what we don't understand? We do that. We speak against that which we do not understand. And God has already set the stage. God has already put in position. Don't you know your next blessing can come from a heathen? I so you don't want to receive that. Spirit of religion don't want to receive that. No, it's got to, no, your blessing your blessing will come from the heathen. Cyrus was not a Christian. Hallelujah. He was of the world. But the Bible says that God spoke to him and told him to tell the people of God to get back to Jerusalem. Do you hear what the Holy Ghost is saying? While it is being said that we cannot return, God is going to speak 
and he's going to tell the world, let them get back in church. Let them get back in the house of God. Let them go back to their worship. Let them go back seeking God. Hallelujah. No devil, no worldly person can keep us from serving our God. We're all in this together. The Bible said that there were three, three groups of exiles that returned to Jerusalem. The scriptures that there might have been more, but the three, three groups recorded in scripture. 536 BC, the first group returned under Zerubbabel. The second group in 457 BC returned under Ezra. The third group in 444 BC returned under Nehemiah. The prophets Zechariah and Haggai were contemporary during that time also with Zerubbabel. What are you saying? That in this world, there has been, we're on this second, this second phase concerning Corona. Now I work on the mountain of education and we were set to return to school August 17th. <laughs> How and ever, the second wind came. And now it is released that we won't return until September the 8th. How many remember out there that we didn't return to school until after Labor Day? <laughs> We're all in this together. God knows what he's doing. Maybe during the first weeks, there was an influx of salvation and souls and repentance. And we were all during the first weeks of this, this disease and this calamity, seeking God. Our, our Facebook pages and, and our uh, Instagrams and, and our Twitters, everything was covered with Second Chronicles 7, 14, during the first win. Everybody, wherever you go, if my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray. Oh, we were intense. We were intentional about seeking God. But it didn't end. And here we are now, 20 weeks in and five days. Hallelujah. Yes, I'm here and repent, but not as intense as from the beginning. Could it be that God is delaying because he's still, there's still those yet. Hallelujah. That needs to come to God. Needs to get on their face. Needs to seek the Lord. Needs to return to God. The Lord knew the day it would begin, and he knows it's ending. He said he has determined the end from the beginning. And we but just believe, God, is your faith still in God? Hallelujah. That no matter how long it takes, we believe God will protect. He will provide. We have not ceased to eat. Hallelujah. God is still keeping. And you may say, what, are those, what about those that went on to glory? Well, look, I just believe the word. I just speak what the words say. It is appointed unto man once. That date, expiration date has already been set. Though we look at the corona, the means by which, but yet God already knew the date. Hallelujah. And better to be in the presence, absent in the body, and present with the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I said, Lord, what about this book? What are you actually sharing with us? He said, though it is affecting all, listen to me closely. These four verses reveal politicians, the priesthood, the prophets, and the people of God. What if we, the politicians, the priests, the prophets, the people of God, what if we all would just come together? How soon would this thing be over? God has a purpose for each and every person in each and every caliber. What are you saying? I'm saying if you are a politician. That just simply means that you govern. You're in government. You oversee. You're in some type of rulership or authority. 
What are you to do? Then you are to be the type of politician as, as, as the rumor bell that hears from God. This is why the Bible says in Romans 13 that we ought to pray for those that have rule over us. We ought to pray for those in our in authority. We're praying that even though they may not know God, that they will hear from God, be led by God, so that all things will work together. Hallelujah. This is not the time to bash leadership. This is not the time uh, uh, to downgrade leadership because the authorities that be are still ordained of God. Whoever is in position, they're there because God knew they would be in position. And we are to submit to authorities. We are to obey the governmental guidelines. I I'm of the heart, saints, I'm of the heart that I'm like David. This matter is too great for me. I'm not going to put my voice on it. I'm not going to put my thoughts on certain things. Wherever my realm is and my level is, that's where I'm going to be. That's where I'm going to pray. That's where I'm going to seek God. That's where I'm going to be in the Word. And I'm not going to try to uh, 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 elevate myself in matters higher than myself. How many know God has people on every level? And if we would just let God talk, to every level. Hallelujah. Let God do the talking. Somebody say, let God do the talking. The Spirit of God is well able to speak on every level. I looked up Zerubbabel's name and his, Zerubbabel, his name means stranger in Babylon. Yet he had a Chaldean name which was Shesh Bazaar. And that meant joy in affliction. What are you saying? <laughs> Though I am a stranger in Babylon, hallelujah. I remember the old song, uh, growing up, this world is not my home. I'm just passing through. How many know we're just a pilgrim in a strange land? Yes, I'm a stranger in Babylon. But while I'm here, I can still have joy in these afflictions. Glory be to God. Because Christ said that the joy that we have, the world didn't give it to us. He gave us joy in the midst of affliction. I looked up joy and I said, Lord God, there are certain scriptures that you want to edify us, build us up with. And, and those scriptures, one is uh, Psalm 16 and 11. Do you have that? Psalm 16 11 says, you will show me the path of life. And in thy presence is fullness of joy. And at thy right hand are pleasures evermore. What are you saying? That even though I am in Babylon, Babylon all around me, affliction all around me, yet I can remain in the presence of God because in his presence is the fullness of joy. Anybody been in God's presence lately? Hallelujah. And being in his presence doesn't mean we forget about what's going on. It just means that we're strengthened to endure what's going on because uh, that we are strengthened in our afflictions. Count it all joy when you fall in diverse temptations. The second one was Psalms 30 and verse 5. For his anger endures but a moment. That's for those uh, that believe or feel that God is angry with us. And these things have come up because God is angry. Well, then you ought to be comforted because his anger endures but for a moment. And then his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but what joy comes in the morning. Hallelujah. I choose to dwell on the joy of the morning than the anger of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, if that didn't help you, how about Psalms 118 and 24? This is the day that the Lord, which the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We're not just saying that religiously. Every day that we wake up, even though we're still strangers in this Babylon, this is still the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Look at Nehemiah 8 and 10. Glory be to God. Then he said unto them, go your way, eat the fat, and drink the sweet, 
and send portions to them for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy unto our Lord. Neither ye be sorry, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. You ought to be shouting right there. What is he saying? Go ahead. Go ahead and go buy you a pair of clothes. And while you're at it, buy, buy somebody else something that, that doesn't have anything. Go ahead. Build your homes. Go ahead. Enjoy your life. Go ahead. Hallelujah. For the joy of the Lord is going to strengthen you. Though there be afflictions, we can still have joy. Come on. Hallelujah. I'd rather, I'd rather dwell in the presence of God, knowing that he will fulfill my joy. Amen. Ezra chapter 2, just to recount, was a, was a record of those who returned. And, and down, you, you do all your reading at home. But further down, around about the 22nd um, verse, there was there's a full list of those that returned to Jerusalem. And I don't know about you, but when I was younger, and, they all, and, and the Bible lists the genealogies, I would skip over I would really skip. I said, I don't have time to read all that. But I was missing a lot of understanding, a lot of information, and a lot of revelation. When you take the time to uh, define the words and look up these words, the Spirit of God will make them relevant to you. But the reason that the Lord lists those that return, the exiles, because in the list, Round about the 49th verse, if their name was not written, they could not benefit and take part in the return. What does that tell you? That, that reminds me of Revelation, that if your name is not written, hallelujah, in the Lamb's book of life, you will not take part, hallelujah, in the return of Christ with us. And going home with him. Hallelujah. There's a reason. And you better make sure that your name is written. You better make sure that your family's name is written. You better make sure that your children's name is written. You better make sure co-workers. Hallelujah. Whomever is in your sphere of influence. You better make sure that they are registered. Hallelujah. In the Lamb's book of life. For the Bible says that they sought their register among those that were reckoned by the genealogy, but they were not found. Therefore were they as polluted and put out from the priesthood. What are you saying? If your name is not written down, we are a royal priesthood, a holy nation. If your name is not written, could it be that God is delayed and God has allowed a second delay? Hallelujah, that your name be written down. Make sure that your name is written and found in the genealogy of the sons of God. Hallelujah. We go on in chapter 3, and it says that worship was restored. Those whose names were in the registry, hallelujah, were able to restore worship in the house of God. I don't know about you, but that means a lot. Come to love God's house. Not the brick and mortar, but I come to love his dwelling, his place. And I know in these times that, uh, God is having to come to our house. And, it, and for some, God hasn't been in our house. And for some, we haven't invited God in our house. But doing this isolation, doing this social distancing, I guarantee you there's some that have been asking God to come on in. Come on in the room. Hallelujah. For we've taken for granted being in God's house. Hallelujah. That we've had to ask God, please come in, God. Father, we thank you for not dealing with us according to our sin. But those that will return, we were able to return to restore worship. Oh, just think about it. When this thing lifts, I'm believing that the house of God will be full. People will flood. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Those that were exiled, remember that they came in three different groups. 
What does that say? That they're all in come at one time. There's a few of us in the house. <laughs> Hallelujah right now. But that's for us to get it prepared and get it restored, get the atmosphere set, get the house God, the house of God prepared for the second wave of those that are going to return, hallelujah, out of exile. Come on, hallelujah. And then even the more God's presence, for he will inhabit the praises of us, hallelujah. And then together collectively, when the third grouping comes, hallelujah, fully restored to the house of God. What a time, as they say, what a time when we all get together. What a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see, hear, and feel Jesus. Hallelujah. We will sing and what? Shout the victory. Come on, give God praise right there for victory. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. When we all got. Whether we're in group one, group two, or group three, God, hallelujah, when we all get together. Hallelujah. How many know, though that be our goal, the enemy is always lurking around. Come on. Hallelujah. He's always lurking around. Chapter four. Hallelujah. What's that? Hallelujah. Opposition. The opposition, the enemy opposing the work. The enemy opposing us coming in. And we know we've heard it. Hallelujah. Though uh, uh, officials allowing public recreational places to open, but they were trying to say that the house of worship was dangerous. Hallelujah. They were trying to say that singing, hallelujah, was dangerous, hallelujah. But you will allow public, worldly places of recreation, hallelujah. We've seen it on the news. We've seen it down south. We've seen it out west, hallelujah, and, uh, that it's okay for worldly recreation. But the house of God, coming in the house of God is a danger and a threat. Hallelujah. But how many know the devil is alive? Hallelujah. That was just to come to try to cease us from coming together, to try to cease us from rebuilding the worship, to try to cease us. Hallelujah. For bringing in, establishing the place of God. Remember, we're still all in this together. Even the opposers, even our opposition. Because if it wasn't for the opposition, we wouldn't know how strong in the faith, hallelujah, we are. If it wasn't for the opposition, you wouldn't know how fearless you are in God. Hallelujah. If it wasn't for the opposers of the cross, hallelujah, you wouldn't know how powerful the cross is. Glory be to God. Even though the work was ceased, they had to stop. Yet, in chapter 5, hallelujah, they were able to begin to rebuild again. Somebody said, we're going to rebuild again. We will rebuild. The question was, who was, who is left among you <laughs> that saw this house in its former glory? Glory to God. Now, I know about us, and I know probably out there in, in your local assembly, you recall when the church house was full. You recall when the praise and worship was just on fire. You recall when the, your man of God, woman of God got up preaching. You recall the fellowship. You recall staying that when the services were over. You have all this recollection. Who among us remembers the house in its former glory? Oh, but don't be saddened. Hallelujah. Don't be saddened by it. Hallelujah. Because it's coming again. The glory of the latter house, hallelujah, shall be greater than the former. Hallelujah! Because when we all get together again, we're all going to be different. We're all going to be changed. We're all going to love better. We're all going to want to tolerate each other more. We're all going to want to be around. We're all going to want to help. We're all going to want to serve. We're all going to want to be in the house of God. Hallelujah! Don't mourn. Hallelujah! The glory of the former house. Compare it not. Hallelujah, the Lord is saying. For the glory of the latter house shall be greater. Hallelujah, we're not just talking brick and mortar. We're talking about your vessel. Hallelujah. 
And you may say, well, I used, I, I prayed more then. I, I fasted more then. I, I was in, I was in God's face more then. I could hear God better then. Oh, but don't compare. Hallelujah. Just get back to rebuilding, rebuilding your prayer life, rebuild your devotion, rebuild your singing and your praises to God, rebuild your worship. Hallelujah. We're in rebuilding right now. Chapter 6 is the account that King, King Cyrus rediscovered the letter and, and the command of King Darius to permit the rebuilding. Hallelujah. What does that mean? That one had to leave. Even though they put out a decree that they couldn't rebuild and they had to cease. How many know God will remove all your opposition and send in another one? Hallelujah. God can't stop, no one can stop the plan and purposes of God in your life. Do you hear what I'm saying? Though you were going well and you were moving along well and, you, and it came to a halt, whatever your vision, whatever your plan, whatever your purpose, whatever your desire, whatever your dream, you were moving along. And this, yes, there were worldly people in position to help you to further the purpose and plan of God. And then it came to a halt. But I'm here to tell you, though it stopped for a season, God is saying he had moved them out the way. All your opposition has been moved out the way. And you are now going to be met with another of the world. Hallelujah. And they're going to give you liberty to move again. Somebody say, I'm moving again. Hear the word of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. It's time to move. It's time to move and again. We find ourselves in the book of Haggai. Haggai was one of the first of the prophets who spoke to the exiles after the return to Palestine. At first we started, hallelujah, with, with King and then Governor Zerubbabel, now we're with King Darius. And he removed the, the prohibitions. He removed the forbiddance. He removed the interception. And, and he removed the prevention of the movement, the forward movement of rebuilding the temple. God brought in another one to advance the movement. Somebody say advance the movement. Now listen, we realize there are a lot of movements out here. There are a lot of voices out here right now. And I'm here to share with you, people of God, people of God, do not get caught up with cultural movements. Stay focused on the kingdom advancement. We're not undermining any of the movements going on. But make sure, be very sure, that you are moving in the advancement of the kingdom of God. Amen? Hallelujah. We're about advancing the agenda of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Jesus the Christ. The focus of Haggai was to urge God's people to be obedient, especially in the rebuilding of the temple. There's an urgency right now for obedience. Am I by myself? Are, are you sensing an urgency to hear from God and to obey God? Oh, I hear you clapping. I hear you. I hear you. You said, that's right. That's right. There's an urgency right now. We've been delayed. We've been delayed for the second group. And I'm, I'm urging you. Hallelujah. In the day that you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Hallelujah. You're hearing his voice right now, right where you are. You don't have to come and wait until a Sabbath day or a resurrection day. This is the day. Hallelujah. The day of salvation. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has come to comfort you, to secure you, to help you. This is the day you call upon the name of the Lord and you shall be saved, rescued, helped, and delivered. Hallelujah. God is raising up his people 
to promote a spirit of revival among the people, to encourage the people in their work, to encourage leaders, to remind all of us of the consequences of our previous disobedience. You know, in rearing my children and, and, and disciplining uh, my children, some, some, some punishments were greater than the others. And I found out that the greater punishments were because they soon forgot. <laughs> they soon forgot their disobedience and the consequence. So I had to give a little stiffer judgment, a little, a, a little extra two minutes maybe on a whooping so that they would remember their disobedience. Glory to God. Yeah, you look and you laughing. I, now the tool by which that judgment was, that's, that's up to you, but I've been known to have a belt, <laughs> stitching cords, you can say what you want to, but I learned not to do it again. Amen. What is the Lord saying? He said he's encouraging us. Listen to him. Return and not fall in previous disobedience. I'm almost done. Thank you, Jesus. Are you getting anything out of this tonight? Is this helping anybody? So as I bring it home in Haggai, he took me to Haggai 1. Hallelujah. And in the first chapter, was the account, it says, there you go, thank you, Holy Ghost. It says, in the second year of Darius the king, Haggai chapter 1, verse 1, in the first day of the month came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet unto Zerubbabel, the son of Shiltiel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua the son of Josedek, the high priest, saying, Thus speaks the Lord of hosts, saying, This people say, The time is not come, the time that the Lord's house should be built. Then came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet, saying, Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses, and this house lie waste? Now therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, Consider your ways. You've sown much and bring in little. You eat, but you have not enough. You drink, but are not filled with drink. You clothe yourselves, but there is none warm. And he that earns wages, earns wages to put into a bag with holes. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. The first thing that, that leaped out at me tonight, church, was the timing, the question. You say the time has not come. God gives specific time in the sixth month, the first day of the month. So I looked according to the Hebrew and Jewish calendar, and that was the month uh, July, August. And a little is August, September. So we're, we're right, we're in August. So this was during that time frame, in August. And August 21st to be exact. So we're about ahead of time. And so we're, we're, we're speaking that which is to come. And this was the month of divine mercy. Somebody say divine mercy. Divine mercy and forgiveness. It's a time of introspection and stop taking it's a time to review one's deeds and spiritual progress somebody shout movement see this is the time we're in August now it's the time to take stock in our own progress are we advancing are we closer in God are we closer with God are we moving forward 
with God. This is the time of his mercy and forgiveness. Oh my God, I said thank you for Rhema Word, God. We're in a time of mercy and forgiveness. I know there are voices that saying God is angry, but no, this is a time of God's mercy and, and, and forgiveness. Hallelujah. And if the, the Lord says his word says that, uh, his mercies are what? New every morning. So this is a time to fall up under his mercy. And you may think, I hear this right now in the Holy Ghost, you may think in your mind that, that God won't forgive you. This is a time God forgives. He will forgive. Matter of fact, just understand he's already forgiven. From the foundation of the world, Christ died. There is nothing you will ever do, think, or speak that has not already been covered by the efficacious blood of Jesus. Hallelujah! For if there is a sin unknown and uncommon to man, Christ would have to die again. But he does not have to die. He is covered, hallelujah, every failure and fault, every misgiving, every shortcoming. Oh God, thank you for your mercy and your grace. This is the time. This is the month of his divine mercy and forgiveness. This is the time for you to take an inward look. It's time to be internal. If I can't be external right now, if I can't be among people, if I can't be among friends, if I can't be among family, it's because God is wanting us to take an introspection. Hallelujah, it's the time to look within and research your deeds and your spiritual progress. Hallelujah. This is the time, hallelujah, of the days of all. I said, the days of all, God. He said, yes, all, as in August. <laughs> if you would just look, God is wanting to, to show you his all, his wonder. Hallelujah, but the world and the enemy want to blind us to all the calamity. He wants to fill our ears with fear and doubt and unbelief. But the devil is a liar, for we look not on the things that are seen, for the things that are seen are temporal, but we look on the things that are eternal. Hallelujah. God wants to owe us. Hallelujah. This is the month for it. Hallelujah. This is the month that we have the most opportune time to return to God. Anybody want to return? I'm going to utilize this time to return. What am I returning to? I'm returning in prayer. I'm returning in love. I'm returning in my devotion. I'm returning in my self-empowerment and I'm coming closer to God. You said self-empowerment? Yes. David encouraged himself in the Lord. You can't, you can't get to your prayer partner right now. You can't get to your pastor right now. You can't get to ministers right now. You can't get to the mother's board, the deacon's board right now. Hallelujah. So you've got to encourage yourself by drawing closer to God. This is the month, hallelujah, that the shofar is sounding. Hallelujah. It's the call to repentance. Don't you hear the watchman? Don't you hear the voices of God? Don't you hear his, his fivefold? They're calling you to repentance. The shofar is being sounded. Lift up your voice. Hallelujah. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up that the king of glory will come in. Who is this king of glory? He is the Lord, strong and mighty. Who is the the king of glory. We don't serve a weak God. Hallelujah. He was so strong that he forced himself to stay on Calvary's cross for you. Hallelujah. The song says that he would not come down from the cross just to save himself. He decided to die. He decided to die. Before he got on the cross, he decided to die just to save me, just to save you. Hallelujah. Sound the shofar. Hallelujah. Lift your voice and declare God. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. What are you saying tonight? We're all in this together. 
What are you saying tonight? We're all in this together. We're all repenting together. Government, repent. Priesthood, repent. People of God, repent. Prophets of God, repent. Hallelujah. We are all in this together. We must rebuild the house of God. We must rebuild the temple of God. David's temple, hallelujah. The tabernacle of praise. This is that month. Somebody shout, this is that month. Somebody shout, this is that month. Hallelujah, that we all come together. Hallelujah. Father, we honor you tonight. Right where you are. Hallelujah. Come on, let's all stand before the Lord. God, we come, Lord God. Hallelujah. This is that month. Lord God, we prayed on this 20th week. We're 20 weeks in, God. You have declared that 20 is the number of redemption. Hallelujah. It's twice 10 which is divine order and completion and fullness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are declaring unto us 20 weeks in and five days, the number of grace and mercy. Hallelujah. That you are here to redeem us. You are here to rebuild us. You are here, Lord God, to repair breaches, Lord God, that we've caused, Father God. Between us and you, God, you are here, Lord God, with mercy. Hallelujah. Plenteous in mercy. For the Lord is good. And his mercy, hallelujah, is everlasting truth enduring to all generations. This is that month. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Where you will, Lord God. Enable us and empower us, Father, to rebuild our waste places. Hallelujah, it's the month of introspection. Lord God, we're not looking upon someone else. Hallelujah, but we're looking within to our own waste places, to our own dry land, oh God. Father God, we pray right now, Lord God. We pray for the Spirit Hallelujah. To talk to the, the Zerubbabel's, Lord God, across this world. Speak, Lord God, to government, Lord Jesus. Father God, in the name of Jesus, speak with them to tell your people, get back to Jerusalem. Hallelujah. That we may come, Lord God, and rebuild the house of God. Father, we ask in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that your spirit, Lord God, we're in this, Lord God, with the priesthood, God, those whom you have called out of darkness into your marvelous life. For we are a holy nation, a royal priesthood, Father God. You're fivefold, Father God. You're officers in the kingdom, God. You're ministers of flames of fire, God, servants of the Lord. Hear the Lord return. Hallelujah. We're all in this together. And the people of God, the blood washed, spirit filled, water baptized. Hallelujah. People of God, we're all in this together. Lord God, pour out your spirit. Let us follow the oil, the anointing, dear God. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness, Father. Heal us and we shall be healed. Bless us and we shall be blessed. Forgive us from all our sins, Father. We confess, Lord God, our sins. And you are faithful and just to forgive us, to cleanse us from our sins, Father God. We love you, Lord, and we know we thank you for keeping us. And Lord God, those who are already with you, Father God, who, who, Lord God, Lord, by reason of Corona, Father, Lord God, it, that might have been the means, but you already knew that they were coming to you. Oh God, heal, comfort, Lord God. 
Hallelujah. We mourn with those that mourn. We dance, Lord God, with those that dance. And we're asking, God, that your joy will be our strength even the more in these times. We thank you, Father. We honor you, Lord. Spirit of unity, bring us together. We pray for the unity of the Holy Spirit with the bond of peace, with love, God. We're in this together. You're with us and we're with you. We're with each other. In Jesus' name, come on and shout hallelujah. High five somebody across the room. We're high-fiving you. We're in this together. We're in this with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As we stand and prepare to sow seed on the truth of God's word, you have been given, hallelujah, the ability to sow your seed through Cash App. They will put it on the screen, those within the house. Hallelujah, prepare, govern yourselves accordingly, according to the instructions that we do not cross each other. Hallelujah, and we honor and we thank you. We thank you right now. Cash app, dollar sign, T-P-H-D-I-M-2. Let's lift up our offering before the Lord. Father, we thank you for seed to sow. You said you would give seed to sowers, bread to eaters, God. And we thank you, God, for every seed sown. Father, we ask that you multiply seed sown, Father, that we may return into your house and rebuild your house, God. Lord, we thank you and we praise you, Lord, for being the head of the church. Thank you, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, bring your seed rejoicing. What you sow in tears, you shall come again, doubtless rejoicing, bringing in your sheaves. Oh, so 